How's it going there, entrepreneurs, investors, uh, people trying to enter into the cannabis industry? My name is Samuel Fisher. I work with Green Dispensary Marketing. I want to talk with you guys today about how to open a dispensary, uh, navigate the legal minefield, uh, make sure that you're set up for success and growth in 2024. Uh, real quick before I dive into it, I kind of want to just show you some of the results uh, that my marketing agency can provide and have pr provided in the past. Uh, right here, we got this $85,000. This is from a company doing something called Parasite SEO. Um, here's a retargeting campaign uh, where we got an uptick in 3,600 in just one day for a client, um, which they were really happy about. Um, here's some articles that we've got ranked, um, as well as also the keywords, best THC gummies, best marijuana seeds, best THC cartridges. We have a lot of experience in this industry. Um, our results-driven agency. We will make sure that your dispensary is ready from day one for success and growth in 2024 to get some of these kind of results that we were just looking at. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. And so step one, I got seven steps for you guys. Um, and so this first step is budgeting and planning. So usually before you even get started, um, you need to make sure that you have a budget and a plan. Um, if you don't have a budget and a plan, uh, you're going to have a bad time, uh, as they say in the South Park episode. I don't know if anybody else is from Colorado. So just make sure initially that you get about $100,000 to get started. Um, usually, I you know I, I would understand that you might not have this kind of money in pocket. So if that's the case, um, I would highly recommend you guys to seek out some angel investors. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's just somebody who's help you with some initial capital to get you going. Um, and so one um, of the little cheat codes, uh, you might have discovered that there's not a lot of cannabis people on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, LinkedIn is a really good place to go if you want to connect with cannabis-friendly investors. And so if you're short on cash, that's one of the first things that you'll probably want to do is just find angel investors that will help you out. I see it all the time on LinkedIn. Uh, people are just basically asking to give money to new dispensary owners like yourself, people that want to own a dispensary. And so also just keep in mind when you're doing your monthly budget, or excuse me, your budget and planning, that you want to account for your monthly overhead too, which includes taxes, inventory, wages, marketing, and more. And so that's step one. Uh, just get your cash straight. Uh, you don't want to enter this realm if you don't have the fresh powder to keep you going. Otherwise, you know, one or two months goes by, you can have your lights out pretty quickly. Next up, step two, uh, there's a big legal minefield. Kind of just imagine that you're just like walking around a minefield as a dispensary owner. One false step can put your lights out. So uh, that's why it's very important to understand the laws and the legislation behind this industry. And so it's constantly changing, as I say right here. And so I would highly recommend just to kind of keep up with some of the trends. Uh, get on LinkedIn, follow some of the newsletters, uh, top newsletters, join some associations. Um, that would be the best way to just kind of get you started on the right foot and or start with a marketing agency that is well aware of the legal minefield, uh, such as myself, uh, Green Dispensary Marketing, greendispensarymarketing.com. If you want to check us out, we'll help you out with the legal minefield getting started. Uh, just give us a call, uh, free consultation, help you out. But uh, so just some basics. If you don't follow the law, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, so it's like the South Park, so you're going to have a bad time. And so what are the initial things? Uh, don't do Google ads. Okay. Don't even try. So there's some exceptions, you know, uh, CBD stores, you can apply for a license in 2024. Uh, there's people who sell Delta 8 products, THCA, THCO, under the legal loophole. That may close in 2024, we'll see. However, that's something that you should also consider, uh, the legal loophole. If you want to learn more about that, I actually have um, some information on my channel on Delta 8 and how it's legal in 2024. Next up, uh, we want to register your business and license it. Make sure that you do this uh, before you even start looking for uh, real estate. Uh, make sure you get your licenses up. Usually it's about $1,000 up front. Maybe depending on your state, you can look at up to 3000 tip give or take. And then as a general rule of thumb, I'm going to go there and fix that for you. So, uh, as a general rule of thumb, kind of budget about $65,000, $75,000 a month uh, just for these legal licensing fees and annual fees that you have to do. Uh, Uncle Sam, he's going to come in hard for your money. Uh, just keep that in mind. And then, of course, make sure that you're filing and paying your taxes. That's a surefire way to get Uncle Sam knocking on your door. And you do not want Uncle Sam knocking on your door for marijuana. 
Um, you just don't. You're going to have a bad time. Uh, next up, step three, your location and real estate. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, as a homeowner, if you own a home, I'm assuming most of the people watching this video already own a home, uh, you already know things like location and how important that is. And so uh, you can buy or rent location or your real estate, excuse me, but kind of put yourself in your customer's shoes. Uh, think about what you would do if you were your customers, if you would go to a store before you actually buy or rent it. Just like a general rule of thumb, people are not going to drive hours to you. You can have the best bud in the world. Uh, you can have good prices, uh, but if you're not close to your target customers, you're not going to get any sales. If you don't get any sales, you're going to have a bad time. I'll stop, I'll stop that joke now. Uh, then finally, next up, I'm on step three here. Next up, before you even get your location, uh, kind of think of a store model. There's there's many different ways to do it. Um, you might have seen, I'm sure many of you have been to many different dispensaries. And so, for example, if you run a medical marijuana dispensary, if you're in a location that still just is medically based, you might want to look at a bank security kind of um, a model where you walk in the door, there's a, a window where the guy checks your medical card. And then once he confirms that you're legit, lets you in. However, somebody with a more recreational store might just have an open door pharmacy style kind of approach. Um, it's really up to you. Um, and so here's an example of a dispensary uh, right here of what you might consider doing. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do it. You should definitely consider your branding, your style, um, and stand apart. Uh, you don't want to just be a talking parrot where everybody else is doing the same thing you're doing. That's a surefire way to lose customers before you even gain them. So that's number three. Uh, step four, uh, this one's a little bit more difficult and complex. And so it's going to involve getting your products and your sales system. And just so right off the bat, uh, what I could tell you uh, working with tons of different dispensaries is that they usually work with local growers uh, if not, or if so, uh, they, they might white label their products or resell products for major brands. And so uh, there, there's lots of big name brands who have some big name products. Um, if you get those on your shelves, it's a good way to kind of just market yourself initially. I say, hey, we got this, we got that. And so otherwise, uh, working with local growers and white labeling your products is a great way uh, to kind of stand apart from other dispensaries in your area. As long as you have good products, uh, the buds don't lie, uh, as you know. So that's also something that you want to do is quality check. And then uh, one thing to keep in mind with your products is that most states, if not all, require you to implement some sort of seed to sale tracking system. Uh, that's just for compliance. And so here's some of the top seed to sale tracking systems that are used. Um, most important thing is to check your state laws, uh, see what they recommend, or if they enforce you to use a certain seed to sale system. So uh, I even said it twice. And then uh, next year, uh, implement a proven POS. Uh, so you can try to build everything from scratch. You know, you, you can put all your products on uh, your own website, and have your own developers and coders, or you could just use a simple proven POS system. Um, that's going to help you just get started from scratch. Um, so they typically do have some monthly fees. However, it's going to help you with compliance. Um, also with your conversion rates, uh, making sure that people who visit your online store and your in, in person will have a good experience. So, and so here's some actually some good examples, Blaze, Dutchie, Kova, Flow Hub, some great options to kind of just uh, get started with as you're going down this rabbit hole. Uh, but then finally, before you can even open up your doors, you need to make sure you have your technology straight. Um, of course, you need to be tracking your sales and how much money you're making, uh, that way you can pay your taxes. But uh, to do these sorts of things, to have the basics covered, uh, you need some computers, you need some printers uh, to pay to print out receipts for your customers, you know, payment terminals. Uh, but, but most areas don't actually allow you to accept credit card. However, if that's something that you could do, that's awesome. Otherwise, ATMs are a good way to kind of just get people in the door. If they have a credit card, so here, point the finger, here's our ATM. Use that. Finally, internets and then uh, receipts. Have your own receipt model. Um, those are some things that you just need to get up into step four. That's step four. Step number five, uh, daily SOPs. And so as you, right when you open your doors on grand opening day, uh, you might be a little stressed. 
you might have already thought about hiring people. One thing I would kind of recommend to you is, especially for those of you who want to kind of open up a mom and pop dispensary, assuming you have the time and you're not just busy doing five other jobs, for example, or five other businesses, um, try to run things yourself. I would actually highly challenge you to kind of run things yourself uh, because that's going to help you know how to handle and manage workers once you get to that point where you're ready to hire them. And so typically I would advise you to kind of spend a week maybe until you know all the daily checklist items. You want to make sure that you know how to run the store because if you don't know how to run the store, uh, your manager and butt tenders, uh, they'll, they'll kind of just come in and act like they know what they're doing. But it's your job as the executive, as the owner, to have daily SOPs for them to follow. It's just going to help your operations, uh, make sure they run smoothly, make sure that they run in compliance with the law, and so on. And so once you get your knowledge down, uh, your SOPs down, and you know how to run the store, and you're doing so in a way that follows the law, and so on, that's when you should start to hire a manager, consider hiring a manager, delegate tasks to them, and then also the bud tenders. Because one of the things I'm trying to, one of the things I was trying to mention here, um, there's lots of laws because of course, if you don't do these things, uh, you can run into big problems with things like purchase limits, medical cards, blah, 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 and so on, right? And so you definitely want to make sure that you're doing things right before you start delegating and trusting others to do things for you. Because if you can't do it right, you definitely can't assume that you're fresh new manager, a single mom who's really hungry and is very clearly a great worker, uh, you can't trust her to be compliant with the law if you don't know how to be compliant with the law. So that's number, that's number five. Uh, next, next up is when we get to hiring. So once you are confident in your ability to run a store and you're good at it, you know what to do, you have the daily checklist, that's where you should get a staff, get some staff. And so here's some basic staff that you might look up, general manager, assistant manager, um, if not a compliance manager, just somebody that's making sure that you're following the law. Security, especially for those who are running a medical marijuana and having that bank sort of set up where you walk in, present your medical card. You'll need a special worker just for that. And then butt tenders, these are the people who actually help your customers work directly with your customers when they're making a purchase. And then finally, uh, I highly recommend working with a marketing agency, uh, Green Dispensary Marketing. Uh, my marketing agency is a great one. We, we're very familiar with this niche. We know how to get things done. We know how to make results, um, as we were kind of looking up here. Um, here's some of the kind of results uh, that we've given in the past. Great, great experience in this industry and would love to help you start to get those kind of results. Uh, yeah, so that's number six. Make sure we get some good staff going. Uh, then finally, number seven, let's do it. Marketing. Um, you will not make sales if you do not market your business. Um, I'm assuming most of you know this. Um, and so I think one of the common trends in the past is that dispensary owners will depend on Leafly, Wheat Maps, fork over a couple thousand a month to those platforms and find themselves quickly addicted to them without getting some organic means of securing and consistently getting traffic. And so in my agency, we found it's a lot easier um, as opposed to using lead maps at Leafly, we found it's a lot easier to make a best-in-class website, make it high speed, um, and then to rank it for terms that are most relevant in your area, such as dispensary near me. Um, it's really easy to do um, for the most part, and we've done this with several different dispensaries. Uh, but if you would like to get your dispensary off on the right foot as a new dispensary owner, this is something that you should also be looking into doing, is getting your own uh, marketing machine that doesn't depend on third parties that cut you off as soon as you cut off the spending. And so that's exactly what a marketing agency such as mine will do. They'll help you get some secure traffic as well as also retarget uh, existing customers, new customers. We'll help you we'll help you stay in touch with them over text, email. We can also get you published on nationally known publications and secure instant traffic for you that way. It's a strategy called Parasite SEO. Um, if you're interested, uh, here's some of kind of our packages, um, just so you can get an idea off the top of my head, off the top of your head, uh, what you would be getting yourself into if you were to decide to work with us. Uh, we got three packages. Um, they look kind of like this. So SEO, uh, it kind of gets a bad rap in many different industries because people don't have the experience and they kind of just set up a marketing agency and say, hey man, oh yeah, give me a thousand bucks, I'll get you ranked. 
first on Google, guarantee. But they don't actually know how to do that. Uh, my agency does have experience in doing that. Um, if you're looking at some of the kind of results up above. Um, and for terms that are much more difficult uh, than you need to do as a local business. Um, next up, the best way to kind of get your rocket juice uh, flowing and exploding, if that makes sense, getting you off to Mars, you want to kind of combine this organic SEO strategy with an SMS and email marketing. And so you'll start to get lots of customers who come and give you their email, give you their phone numbers. And a lot of these dispensaries, they don't actually leverage this, essentially what is a gold mine. Um, and they'll just kind of take their email, take their phone number, and then just not ever do anything. You know, maybe you just don't want to spam your customers. I get it. But you should be staying in touch with them if you want to keep them coming back, have them tell their friends, and so on. And then finally, those of you who are ready to go to the moon, um, essentially overnight, one thing I would recommend for you, maybe in tandem with your uh, online store, is to set up a Parasite SEO I set up a Parasite SEO store, which includes products that are nationally legal, such as cannabis seeds. You can sell cannabis seeds in Maryland. You can sell them in Texas. They're completely illegal. And so uh, if you were to simultaneously do that, so maybe you also include some Delta 8, whatever, whatever is your spiel, um, we can publish the publish you as the best cannabis seed company on top major publications consistently and then consistently secure traffic for you. Um, and so if you're curious about the, the kind of results, here's actually two months of uh, Parasite SEO for just one article that we did last year. Just one article. So as you can see here, we have a $75,000 price tag. In two months, this one article right here made an ROI on that and continues to make an ROI. And so I'm not saying that this is what we're gonna do for you, but I do know how to move the needle. I do know how to do SEO. Um, I do know how to deliver results that deliver ROIs. And so um, if you want to learn more about me, this Green Dispensary Marketing, greendispensarymarketing.com. However, I hope this is helpful uh, for those of you who are interested in kind of getting started uh, with a dispensary, how to get going, how to do so correctly, and how to ensure uh, that you're able to make some money and not just uh, close your doors. But anyways, that's it for me. My name is Samuel Fisher. You can check me out at greendispensarymarketing.com if you want to learn more about me and my services. However, I hope you have a great day and I wish you the best of luck with your new dispensary and I hope it just brings tons of success for you, your family. That's what you deserve. Thanks again. Have a great day.